G'day fellas, and welcome to the fourth and final game of the group stage. I say the fourth and final game of the group stage is the fourth and the final game of the last week of the group stage, so still technically true, but welcome nonetheless. This is the Outback Octagon, spawning in, playing as one of our Abbasid players today. We've got Crackety. Other Abbasid players on the menu include Adni, who's up to the north, who spawned in as Abbasid. Uh, we've also got Kor, uh, who has spawned in, also playing as Abbasid. We've got Don Ardi over to the west, who's also spawned in Abbasid. That is correct. Today's game is brought to you by the Abbasid Dynasty. It is the Abbasid Dynasty against the world. Everybody is Abbasid. You get an Abbasid, you get an Abbasid, you get an Abbasid. Last week, they were handing out Conquerors. This week, they were handing out Abbasids. Congratulations to everyone who was playing along, but not everybody got Abbasid. Not everyone got Abbasid. No, no, no. We've got B, who spawns down on the south side. He's going to be playing as the English. Down towards the very south, we've got the Sniper, who spawns in. Hold on, I got to do that properly. Uh, you know what? We're gonna we'll leave him to the end. We'll leave him to the end. I got I got to do that properly. If we're gonna do it, we got to do it right. We got Bra, who spawns in on the pink, playing as the Delhi Sultanate, and over on the green, it's Lenok playing as the Mongols. Now we do have a uh, a, a purple Don Arty Town Center that did get cancelled here. Obviously, realizing that Lenok is so close, but our last player. Our final player, who has now replaced De Muslim. That is correct. De Muslim is not in the event anymore. Uh, he's decided uh, to not, not to partake in it anymore. And so we've got a replacement. It is going to be the one, the only, the Sniper. Underscore AOE. Uh, <laughs> we actually casted a game from Sniper a, a fair while ago. I remember the game off quite well. It was the Sniper against Boyt. Uh, and Boyt was playing, I think Boyt was playing as uh, as Chinese and Sniper was playing as English. So we've got Sniper once again on the English. It's great to see him back here. I think he's going to be feeling right at home. So let's talk a little bit about this map and let's talk about some of the sieves that we're missing here. So you are not going to be able to see any Chinese in this game. You're not going to be able to see any Holy Roman Empire this game. You're not going to be able to see any Rus. You're not going to be able to see any French. No, 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 sir. There are very limited sieves in this game. I can, I'm can. i going to bring this up just for myself. We've got Mongols, Delhi, two English, and four Abbasid. So the question for you guys is, do you think the Abbasid is going to be victorious today? Because there's a lot of Abbasid potential. And take a look at this. Even up towards the north, we've got double docks beginning to open up for our Abbasid players in the north. But remember, with, with more Abbasids on the map, that means less landmarks on the map, which means more chance at landmark snipes. That is correct. And we've got Lenok spawning in with his very first good spawn that is correct we've seen lee knock a couple of times before and every single time he goes for a fast imperial into gg and it never seems to go that well for him but today lee knock fortunately has spawned in over on the east side of the map and he is well he's a little bit further away than everybody else so i'm gonna be looking out for him other people that we're going to be watching out for are Don Artie. Now, Don Artie, notorious for his aggression. Somebody who will, at the drop of a hat, look to turn the tables very, very quickly upon you. So if I'm Bra, if I'm Kor, I'm being very careful right now because I don't want to mess with Don. And he's got a nice little spot over towards the west. So I would be tipping him to be one of my favorites for this one. By the same token, up towards the north, Adney's got a great little spot. Obviously, he's quite close to Kor, but Kor's going to be wanting to go his separate way anyways. I suspect the majority of the action is going to be down here towards the south. Obviously, we've got the Sniper, who spawns in quite close to Bra. We've also got in between them Crackety, who's kind of in a bad spot because he's got over to his east side, B. B going to be opening up with some fishing already. Take a look at this. We can see that the walking is going to begin. Uh, for for these uh, shoreline fish, he's going to be bringing those bad boys in. But, uh, I mean, uh, so far from what we can see on this map, Let's, ta let's uh, take a look at the traders. That's go it's going to be a really important factor. Now, we don't have a French player, so we're not going to be able to identify where those trade routes are. So I'm going to be doing my best uh, to try and find all of them. So this is going to be our first trading post site, right in the corner. Second one, up towards the north, is going to be a coastal trade post. Now, remember, just because it's coastal doesn't mean you can't land trade with it. And Lenok scouts this out. Lenok, the kind of guy to go for a silver tree. So don't be surprised if that's what we see. Uh, we do have... Look at this, Crackety here. Going to be... Interest. Look at that house of wisdom. 
Oh my lord, it, 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 it goes all the way to the other map. I, I think that's Dry Arabia over there. Look at that. Look at that influence. Damn, girl. How you fit in them jeans? Whew. Look at that. So, he's got the, the landmark in the corner. Smart move from him. To me, this says, I want to commit and I, I want to move my base over here. Yeah, my starting town center, it might be over here. But this is where the rest of the world begins. This is this is Crackety's new base. Uh, so, you know, we, we've heard a lot of things about Crackety. The question is going to be whether he's going to be able to make it work here today. And now going to be able to find... We'll take out that scout there from Bruh. Uh, so that is a Bruh moment indeed. So Crackety going with the corner. So nice little spot there for him. But we'll talk more about those traders. We've got the second one, Coastal Trading Post. We'll look out for more of them. Sometimes they come into the center. I don't see any of them around here at the moment. Nothing up towards this northern part. It's that dock. Maybe we've got something else in the center. There we go. There we go. There she blows. It's the coastal trading post in the center again. And look at what we've got over here. Don Artie going to be looking to mimic the success that Crackety's had in this early stage of the game. It's going to be that house of wisdom going down right in the corner. So you can tell that these guys are experienced free-for-all players on the Abbasid. <laughs> look, look at this. Can we get a house of wisdom in every single corner right now? Adney going to be doing the same thing. This is ludicrous. This is next level. Who else have we got out here that's playing the Abbasid Dynasty that could potentially be doing it? I guess it's Kor. Kor, the only one gonna, <laughs> gonna be letting us down. Yo, Kor, I gotta be real with you, man. There, there was a great spot. Oh my god, he's even got... There's even a villager down here. Can you imagine if we had all four corners sitting here <laughs> with the landmark in them? Oh my god, that would be crazy. The thing with the, the, the blue landmark for Crackety, it kind of looks like water though. When you look at that landmark on the minimap, you don't really see it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just like, I just look there and I'm like, oh, it's more water. Maybe that plays into his strengths. We'll have to watch. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, maybe not. Maybe not. So plenty of trade posts out on this map. Let's check in with the sacred sites as well. Three sacred sites have spawned in on this map. Let's see if we can find them all, just like Pokemon. Here's the first one. Second one, going to be a little bit more over to the east. And then I suspect up towards this position. Nope. Nope. Anybody see it? Anyone see it? Got one. Am, am I blind? I'm legally blind. Two. I'm going to look on my big minimap. Well, I can, I can always only find two. Bro. Why am I so bad at this? One. Two. It's near Core's base? Oh, thank you. There you go. It's near Core's base. There it is. There's the third one. So for anybody going for a Sacred Site victory here, you'd have to put your money on Core just because he's got the Sacred Site in his base. It makes it a lot harder for players because let's let's say as an example, B manages to run over the top of Crackety. Oh, that ain't good. That ain't good. Bra finds it. Uh, but at least... So th this is one of the things, right, that you've got to remember. So let's say you're bra and you're thinking, all right, I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack somebody and I'm going to take him out. He's looking at Crackety and he's like, I'm going to take Crackety out. Well, the problem is if you try and take Crackety out, well, you've got a problem because you're going to have to march your rams. You're going to have to march all of your units over towards this corner and take him out. And there's always the chance that someone might beat you to it. Uh, so we'll take a look exactly at, at how he plays that. But obviously he's now aware of that. Dome of the Faith going to be coming down as well. Core reaching the second age. Multiple people going up. Now we've got... Adney also sniper going up down towards the south. You can see he's very safe, very happy. Going to be going for that second town center. Mining out plenty of stone uh, and plenty of wood at this point. Don reaching the feudal age as well. Going to be going up with, I would suspect every single player going to be looking to go up here with the exact same economic wing. Indeed, it is going to be the case. It is going to be the case. Every single player aging up with the economic wing here. A little bit strong. A little bit strong. And I, I you know... Don't get me wrong. I'm not about nerfing the Abbasid dynasty. I don't want to nerf the Abbasid, but by the same token, it's a little bit predictable. Like, th they tried to bring down the other other techs to make them a little bit more viable in the first age or in the in the, in the the feudal age, and it doesn't really seem like much has changed. Every it, it just seems like they got a little bit faster, which is a good thing for the Abbasid dynasty, but not necessarily a good thing for the health of, of the civilization because ideally you'd love them to have the option to just do whatever they want. Um, and, and not feel like they're burdened and going into this one direction. So, yeah, I, I'm curious what the developer's outlook is going to be with regard to that. But uh, something to think about. Crackety now dropping down the second town center. 
Uh, so this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a, a, a curious uh, position for him because it looks like he's just going to be committing that that house of wisdom over towards the east. Now keep in mind this is not connected to his network. So whereas somebody like uh, Core he's going to be able to connect this quite easily to his network. He's going to be able to get those bonuses in. You know the extra ten percent gather rate, the extra research speed, the extra production speed. Crackety's not going to be able to do that. Now, I, I thought that Crackety would have just picked up and moved over towards the west or towards the east side. Not going to be the case here, but you can see what Don's doing. Uh, so Don, being very smart here, is extending out that network of influence. He is slowly but steadily going to be reaching his base. It's going to take time. You know, I, I suspect he might get there around the 20th minute into the game. Maybe not there, maybe like the 15th minute, but he's going to be working towards it. Main town center as well. A lot of villagers here chopping wood. Not a lot of people on food for the moment. So Don struggling with that food income. Fisherman out here though. Adney as well as Kor just looking to chill out for the moment. No real interest in, in taking down each other's mutual... Uh, Don? Don with a transport ship? Don comes up as well. Look at this. Jo Don joining the fishing party up towards the north. Now interestingly there's a lot of nice little spots that you could be fishing here if you wanted to. Second town center down for the sniper. And now the town centers really start booming out. Third town center also going to be coming down for Adney. He is looking to go for the, the 73 town center challenge. I actually played a game against Adney and he made close to, I think it was 14 town centers in the game that I played against him. Uh, there was a lot of town centers. I, I felt he might've been memeing. Uh, so it, it could be a viable strategy here in free for all. Lee knock though. I like his position. He goes for the deer stones here instead of for the trading landmark. So obviously the trading landmark the the uh the whatchamacallit the uh the silver tree uh always going to be you know great when you've got access to those trading posts and that's exactly what lenox got here so it's curious that he didn't actually go for them and he is especially because he knows about these these locations but he's obviously decided against it step it out going to be coming through now so it looks like he's just gonna be playing standard now i would expect him to play it a little bit similar to the way that we saw uh, Marine Lord play it, where he'll go for a fast castle, look to drop down double monastery and get quadruple relics or quadruple uh, shamans out and move those bad boys around the map, just picking up all the relics. So that's going to be a potential option for him. His Uvu is on the other side of the map though. So it's going to be quite a walk for him to get there. I, I really wish we could turn off those voices, dude. Can you hear the Abbasid, like the scouts just calling out nonstop? Can we, let's go to like Lee Nock. I, I, I don't know whether that's going to be any better because I don't. I think the voices aren't overruled by which player you're viewing. But Abyssid scouts are notorious just for their constant callouts, uh, and they're quite loud. So this is going to be a fun game. Let's just say that much. I, I, I will give an extra three points to every scout that you kill that's from an Abyssid player. Listen, you can hear them screaming. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, you but you. Come on, get, get those points, Crackety. Get him. Yeah, you take him out, bruh. If, if he actually kills him, I'm going to be really happy. All right, we'll tune back in with, with the scouts a little bit later. We'll see exactly where Lee knocks in. He's dropping down a uh, he's dropping down an outpost. He might just be thinking about going straight fast Imperial here. This could be a smart move for him to do that. Uh, just consider the fact that he's got so many resources at the moment in the bag. Uh, just from or in the bank, just from fishing. Listen to those freaking scouts, dude. <laughs> you know what? I need, I need to write this down for like my, like a proposed spectator mode is like have an option to turn off scouts. Just, just turn off scouts. <laughs> Disable the scouts, man. They're so loud. Oh my Lord. They echo through the battlefield and it's, it's only the Abbasid scouts. I don't know why it's only the Abbasid scouts. All right, well, more town centers now coming down towards the south. It's going to be Sniper who's sitting on three TCs. Sacred Sight going to be captured up here for Bra. Now, keep in mind, he's our only Delhi player in the game. We've got one single Delhi player. It's going to be Bra uh, who is doing it. Uh, so he's still working on, at the moment, that, that two town center play. For Don Arty, he's moved on into three. Second Sacred Sight also being captured. Remember that third Sacred Sight? We talked about it a bit earlier. Up close towards the base of Core. Core already bringing out some lancers. So just playing it defensively, but at the same time, nice and safe. He's connected to House of Wisdom. Everybody going to be working. Everybody going to be on the same page. Don still yet to connect his own one, though. First attack of the game. It looks like it's going to be a villager that's going down 
Adney going to be looking to cause a bit of havoc over on this eastern side. Lee Nock now going to be looking to click up to the next stage. So every single game that Lee Nock has played, he has gone fast Imperial. Every single free-for-all game, he goes for a fast Imperial. In the very first game that he played, he did fast Imperial into GG with the English. Second game, fast Imperial into GG. Third game, fast Imperial into GG. This game, fast Imperial. Will it be into a GG? That is the question. I don't know what the answer is going to be, though. We're going to wait. We're going to find out. But he's looking good at this point in time. There's not really much of a threat. If the biggest threat that he's got right now is Adney with the horsemen and the scouts, he doesn't need to be worried. Springled emplacement going to be firing off, providing him a little bit more coverage. Walls beginning to come up here as well for B. Looking to secure up some land. B now going to be going up with the Wingard Palace, so not going to be the only player in Imperial, Lee Nock. We see that White Stupa is almost complete. There it goes now. Sniper now reaches the Castle Age as well. Speaking of Castle, it's going to be the White Tower that goes up for him. So not looking towards that King's Palace. He's got three town centers, so why the heck does he need a fourth one? B now reaching Imperial. Uvo getting depleted. We're not going to have to start thinking about moving house. Maybe coming over towards this eastern side. Attacks now beginning. It looks like Crackety is going to be the first one out of the box. Heading towards the base of Bra. Earlier, we saw Bra scout out the uh, the House of Wisdom in the corner. It doesn't look like it's been scouted out by anybody else. But remember, Bra could be used, could use that information against Crackety. He could expose people about where that landmark is. Men at Arms is going to be coming in underneath the town center. Keep going to be coming forward. Siege Workshop also going to be coming down. And remember, Bra is in age two. At the moment, when it comes to Bra's resources, he's got enough to drop down that third landmark and indeed looks to drop it. It's already been dropped, in fact. It's going to be the compound of the defender. It's on the other side of the map. Wallalol down towards the south. It looks like it's just going to be a scout that is being picked up here. Bra going to be trying to move out with the relic. Unfortunately for him, going to get chased down by the sniper. And I'm not talking about the villager. I'm talking about the guy who owns it. His name is the sniper. Don reaches the castle age as well. And now things starting to heat up. Crackety looking to try and take this position. Now remember that even in the event that he forces his opponent out from this position, that he's already got that landmark up towards the north. And Bra is thinking about potentially even going to Imperial here. So even if things get awry for him. Interestingly, it looks like we've got an alliance here. These two guys, I mean, the fact that he is right next to them and comfortably doing that, you could definitely say that you've got a refugee and someone who is willing to accept them. So, very nice of this guy. You can you can say Adney is a bit of a humanitarian player, uh, accepting the refugee from the south. Lancer numbers looking healthy. Very, very health, healthy right now for core. The question is, where does he go with them? What does he do with them? Relic's coming back. Bra heading towards the north side. Looks like the, sh the uh, Imam from core, unfortunately, going to be missing the scholar from Bra. And now up towards, up towards the north, we can see that Leenok has awoken. You have awoken the bear, or, or rather the octopus. Village is going to get taken out. Emplacement going to be coming through. Stone walls do come up. The fishing boat's just sitting idle at the moment. He wants to get back down there and look to drop down a dock. Sacred site being taken by Core. All three sacred sites will be taken now. Two held by Bra. One of them actually being neutralized by Crackety. Crackety being very, very potent here in the center up against bra another relic gonna be taken here by crackety we can check in on the relic count at the top you can see crackety holds one b holds three core holds three two to bra zero on adney zero on don one on sniper and zero on leenock sacred site now captured up towards the north plenty of stone walls coming through adney looking good on this top side He's got to be careful, though, because he has definitely made an enemy. Somebody he didn't need to make enemies with. He's decided to do it. Lee not going to be the one that he's targeting down. We've got a relic that actually tried to get through on the backside here. The question is whether Lee Nock actually goes for it. I haven't seen him actually drop down any kind of religious units. No monastery. No prayer tent. Bombard going to just be rolling back. Doc going to be coming down. And you can see Lee, all Lee Nock wanted to do, to do was establish this dock. He's like, yo, just let me fish, man. I just want to fish. And speaking of fish, Don Adi smelling some fish as he hits the Imperial Age. Second layer of stone walls going to be coming through for Don. 
He doesn't muck about when it comes to the stone walls. No, sorry, Bob. Trade has begun as well. Don Hardy is trading, ladies and gentlemen. Don Hardy is trading. Going to the Imperial Age military wing. Going to be the only wing that's not unlocked. He actually goes to the Imperial Age with the, the culture wing. Fishing boats getting cleaned up from Lenok. It's going to be B that cleans them up. So the fishing is get really getting cleaned up. He had a lot of different fishing angles. First one, second one, and the third one. Two of which have been cleaned up. One been, has been reestablished. But I got to I gotta give credit to B right now. He's looking good in this game. He's looking a lot better than what he's looked before. An interesting keep has come down from Bra as well. Dropping a keep in the base of Crackety. So these guys definitely seem to be enemies at this stage, you would say. First landmark does go down, though. It's going to be Crackety who manages to take out the first landmark of Bra. Second landmark going to begin focused down now. Outpost going to be able to fire down upon the battering ram. And we see another relic coming through here. So many relics trying to get through on this position. Adney reaches Imperial Age as well. It's going to be the trade wing that he goes for as well. Over on the west or on the east side, we still yet to see the Imperial Age come through for Crackety. Destroyed Bra. Let. Oh my god! Oh my god! Adney, Adney kills the refugee! Oh my god! He, he let him live and then he was like, nah, sorry, brah. And now the town center is all that remains. Oh my God. He could have actually just taken the points there. I don't know why he didn't. Look at this. He kills the refugee. The refugee came up here. I thought they were living in peace. I thought they were living in a harmony. But it turns out very quickly policies against the refugees have been enacted. And with that, the war in the homeland just continues to rage on and things not looking good for Bruh. He's going to have to find a place to build his fourth landmark. Village is up towards the north for core here. Got to be running into the vills of Don Adi. We see stone walls coming up for Don. It's rare that he likes to make stone walls, but it seems like today is going to be the day that he does it. There's a village up that's exposed on the outside of this wall. And there's a good chance that core is going to be able to, to pop that out if he, if he wants to. More relics being taken. Village is taken down. Bra still healing up at, at this point in time. Springhood's going to get focused down. Meta Arm's going to be able to do it. You can see them trying to take down that counterweight trebuchet. And now we see that, unfortunately for Bra, nothing remains whatsoever. The village is going to be trying to run out. A few relics back here. One relic made it through. The other two relics got cleaned up. And Lenok just chills out for now. Continuing to build up his eco economy at this point. He's on 93 villagers. That town center for Bra just remains. Still yet to be taken out. He's struggled throughout these games, Bra. I don't know whether it's just because he's not really made alliances or whether it's because he's been stuck between people, but unfortunately for him, things not going well. And another person that they're not going well for right now well, I thought it would have been Crackety, but it looks like Crackety's been ignored, and it looks like Core is running straight towards B. There are no walls up right now. A council hall's exposed. A town center's exposed. And very short distance away, we've got the King's Palace as well as the Wingard. Main town center still under threat right now. Crackety looking to, to clean up, looking to do the final amount of damage. Sacred Sight in the middle, captured up by Core. Remember, there's the potential for that Sacred Sight victory. Elite Lance is going to be repelled away by just a handful of, of hardened spearmen. Some H2 spearmen doing their job right there. You've got to start paying those guys more, I think. Plenty of units in here. Adney bringing in a couple of units as well. Looking to siege down B. I don't know whether we've got an alliance up towards the north, but it definitely seems like these guys not interested in killing each other for the moment. Townsend is still just chilling out at the moment. I, 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 I think the case is that Crackety doesn't realize that this landmark to the north has been killed. And so he's just leaving the town center. And the longer that he leaves it, the more likely it is that Bri is going to be able to drop down a fourth town center, or a fourth uh, landmark. Longbow's coming out. Elite Longbowmen are through. Elite Lance is going to have to fall back here. Reboldequin is out. You better not mess with the Reboldequin, that is for sure. If you haven't seen these guys before, you're about to witness glory. Glory to the Revoltaquin. 
Get him, Randy. RKO him off the top rope. Do it. Do it. it. You can see that he wants to. Get him, boy. Back towards the west. The town center is actually burning right now. Sniper is actually the one that, that's made it tick, though. Does Sniper pick up the kill for this? We might have to go back and check the logs, but this outpost is burning down the town center. You can see the damage that it's doing as well. Push coming through. Looks like attention might be drawn up towards this north side. You can see the armies of Adney and Kor working together. Looking to try and take out Lee Nock. He's got all of his landmarks together. Bra does get taken out. It's not going to be by the outpost of the sniper. Rather, it's going to be by the trebuchets here of Crackety here. He picks up three points. And with that, the first player knocked out of today's game is Bra. Next on the hit list, Lee Nock. He tries to make a bit of an escape. The step right out doing the classic salami, heading to the forests. And just like that, completely surrounded. Core looking very strong now. He's going to be able to surround a lot of hand cannoneers here, though. I think Lee Nock should be able to hold this with the hand cannoneers that he's got. But the Khan goes down. And as you guys know, when the Khan goes down, that is not a good sign. And with that Khan going down, I wouldn't be surprised if GG gets called any second right now. Second town, third town center coming up. Fourth town center going to be coming up as well from Lee Nock. And still the, those Lancers rampage through. Deerstone's going to be going down. One, two landmarks remain. Three landmarks over here. And with that, there are still seven that remain in this game. The keep actually got knocked down in the base here. So the question is, who is next? Don's got some pretty happy walls up here. Core as well. Don's got a decent amount of trade. He's happy trading where he is. He's actually quite open in the center here, but he has walled himself off away from that position, but he still is very, very open. Outpost now beginning to come up. Bombards, it looks like Lee not going to be able to hold against Core's attack. You can see him working towards that town center as well, cleaning up villages. But now the Bombard numbers are starting to rise. Still, this Uvu is standing. Remember the Uvu depleted a long time ago. More villagers going to be going down now. It's going to be Core looking to clean them up. Core definitely on the attack here against Lee Nox. Senses that there might be blood in the water and looks to finish him off. Second sacred site. Yet to be captured. Actually, I take it back. That is the second sacred site. He's got the first one in his base. So that's the second sacred site. So 500 gold passive coming in at the moment for Core. He's doing really well for himself. And now it gets called out. Don is trading. People see that in the chat. Now, not only is Don trading, but he's also getting stone in. That's a big fact. Or a big factor, rather. Uh, really relevant. Important for p players to be considered. You can see right there, Don is trading very middle, hardcore trading. And that's incredibly important. Why is that important? That's important because this means that Don has stone income that other players aren't going to have access to. It means he's going to be able to put more walls down. It means he's going to be able to put down emplacements in his outpost. And most importantly, it means he's going to be able to afford a wonder. So you need to be very careful about Don and about Don's trade. And you can see the outpost coming up right here. Look at Don, the way that he's playing. You know exactly what he's thinking. He's done this before. He will do it again. These outposts. He knows the game. He knows the rules. And so do I. Lancer Nut Mass now going to be coming in once again. Core focusing the player that can't make any walls. Holes in the walls up towards the north. You can see not a lot of progress going to be able to be made here. I think it's a smart move not to go for the, the Abbasid player towards the north. It's just so much. So much stuff. We now see that. We now see the final win come through on Adney's House of Wisdom. Down towards the south. It looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of a push on the water. A couple of Carricks coming out for B. Sniper holding on for the moment. Outposts are getting slowly and steadily more emplacements. But still holding. Another keep coming up. Council Hall still alive. Council, uh, town Center, rather, still alive. All four landmarks. And Crackety finally reaches the Imperial Age. Welcome to the new world, Crackety. Glad you could join us. He's now up into the Imperial Age. and going to be looking to get those Imperial upgrades. We can see those coming through now. 
But now Core gonna be looking to focus down these landmarks. We we see that the Deer Stones is down. The main town center is here. White Stupa, and it looks like a little bit of a wall alone might be coming off, but it's going to be very short-lived as the relic does fall down onto the ground. But he's managed to bait out those lances, you can see. He pulled them out of position, but the White Stupa gonna be going down. Step it out up towards the north. It's hidden away nice and safely. Uh, but keep in mind, there might be line of sight on that. He's done a good job to hold that away, but now the town center is going to be looking to get away. Khan going to be dropping down the arrow, but unfortunately it looks like he's stuck. Somebody call Step Bro right now to get me out of this situation. Unfortunately, you're going to need more than Step Bro right now, as that landmark is going to be going down as well. Three landmarks going down, and Lenok, he's going to have to call every member of his family the Step Ones and the ones that he's actually related to. Because right now, all of these lances are heading towards the north. Looking to try and take down that step out. But whether they connect the dots, whether they're able to make it across, that is going to be the difference. You can see he's out here looking. He doesn't know where it is. <laughs> I thought it was a wall on the map. It was not a wall on the map. No, sorry, Bob. It was a wall of houses. Houses across the entirety of this map. I don't know whether that connects them. I think it actually might. Phantom houses? Oh my god, please don't tell me it actually connects them. Oh my god, Crackity is doing it. He did it with the Holy Roman Empire. Now he's doing it with the Abbasid Dynasty. The Phantom houses are coming out. Oh my lord. So for anybody who wonders how this works, so basically when it comes to phantom houses or phantom buildings, you don't actually need to build them for them to count. So for the House of Wisdom as an example, uh, the only buildings that will count here are the ones that are constructed. So these ones here, they're not going to count. But what they do do is extend the uh, the influence of that House of Wisdom out to the mills. And then the, these all count. All of these buildings that are built down here, all of these buildings now then count. Uh, so he's managed to extend that influence out through, you know, maybe maybe a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred wood uh, down in this southern position. But now we got players building in on top of each other. Uh, B as well as Crankity going to be working together. Now the question is whether they're actively working together or whether they've just built in the same direction. You can see that they're both trying to get down buildings in the exact same spots. Lenox still struggling, but it looks like the step right out going to be able to keep him alive for a little bit longer. He's managed to rebuild the White Stupa. Now going to be looking to build up that town center. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Towards the middle. Numbers for Core looking good. One of the big factors to consider is that Core has not yet walled up. When it comes to playing these free-for-alls, walling up is imperative because it prevents these snipes from coming through. And it could be super easy for somebody to come through and say, hey, Core, where's your town center? Oh, there it is. Hey, Core, where's your house of wisdom? Oh, there it is. Boom. And then they're dead. Always really, really important. Especially someone like Adney, who could just very easily, you know, load a transport ship with bombards and boom, boom, dead. Uh, and by the same token, uh, Don could definitely do that as well. Uh, so always something to consider. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see more walls coming up from Don. He's got a second layer up towards the north that he's adding in slowly. You can see a single villager task to do it. Down towards the south, he's got double stone wall layers as well. So if anybody's in a prime position here for the late game, I'd have to say it's got to be Don. Don has done this a million times before. He's mined out this position. He could be adding for the world's fastest wonder win right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do it. But now we see Landmark going to be attacked. The Carrick going to be looking to snipe these down. Moving in on the south side, he's got five Carricks here. Six one coming in. Something that you don't normally expect on a map like this is to see naval warfare, but it's going to be the case. And it's not going to be the first time that B is going to be upset by these these naval ships as more of them continue to go down, being focused down by trebuchets, I suspect. We did see a game earlier, uh, in uh, earlier in the event, with a lot of water, and B was on that one. Keep in mind... The trading post at the north here is not a coastal trade post. This is a normal trade post, which means you're not going to be able to send your coastal traders to it. So even in the event that he clears this out, he's still not going to be able to trade towards it. He'd be able to trade with the dock uh, if B died, uh, but that would be it. That would be it. Uvu still alive, chugging along. Speaking of still chugging along, Lee Knox still chugging along. 
He's managed to get that white stupid back up. We'll take a look and see the, if the town center's back up. Deer stones not going to be repaired up just yet. Step right out towards the north. Main town center. I'm not sure exactly where it is. I don't actually know where it is. Is it somewhere in here? I got no idea where that main town center is. He might have moved it out. We'd have to double check. But now the fight continues on the south side. English versus English. Something that you don't expect when there are... Then when there are four Abbasid players in this game. But now turning their attention towards Crackety, the first landmark of his is going to be going down here. Trebuchet is doing a great job just lobbing their, their boulders just a few meters away. The town center goes down. The second remains the House of Wisdom. But remember, he's not yet walled it in. Makes it difficult for him. Makes it makes it really hard because now with that landmark going down there is one landmark remaining sniper needs more space so it seems crackety is going to be the target for this situation don continues trading for the moment i gotta i gotta check in with don give me a second here oh my god look at the resources in the bank for don i mean you guys can already see it you you, you guys are uh, witnessing it let's have a look at the outpost numbers though i want to check in with adney you can see up towards the north, Adney's been trading like a madman. What are his numbers? Oh, damn, Adney looking pretty hot over here. Uh, so well, let's let's check in with one of his villagers. Adney on 134 outposts at the moment. Uh, so it might look like a lot, but in reality, these are rookie numbers. We've seen way more than that before. I mean, I'll be honest with you, that's still a lot of outposts. That's kind of scary. Uh, but that is going to inflate his score. And we can see right now he is the score lead. And by inflating your score, you do make yourself a target. There's a nice big gap here, which I suspect might be thinking about a wonder. Uh, the other alternative is that he puts it down over here. Another keep going to be coming up. So players is always going to be thinking about wonders in the late game. Villagers going down, getting absolutely massacred by that emplacement. We'll check in on the south side and see how that progresses come through. Looks like just the down center was taken out in a couple of universities i think i think that might be a university i'm not I, i'm not 100 sure maybe not looks looks kind of a bit small for a university single villager coming back in to rebuild the town center now up to the north the house of wisdom remains i, I mean I, I say it remains alive it's been attacked though so something to consider villagers unfortunately losing their life they tried their best fishing boats continue coming back back in I think they're, yeah, they're running out of deep water fish, unfortunately. Trade being really strong out here for Adney. 31 stone is just absolutely perfect. So Adney going to be in a great position in the late game as well. And you can see on the map, like, what Adney is doing, it, it, it's so smart. He's just taking more and more of the map. And the more of the map that you take, the harder it becomes for your enemy to push through it. And we can see, is he actually moving towards, like, a, a full trading-based economy? How many traders has he got out right now? 73 traders right now with 120 in queue he is going full traders we might actually see the first 200 trader game i would honestly love to see that because on honestly the traders are kind of busted the fact that they can look at look at what we are seeing right now adney is actually taking the entire map this is so smart of him as well the problem is that is that there are a few weak points in the event that don or core look to get over here they can begin to build up just a small force of carrix or zebex something like that push their way through on these outposts drop down a whole bunch of bombards trebuchets and it's very very close very 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 close so you've got to start thinking about even looking to try and take control of this side maybe even looking to drop outposts down over here you just don't want to cause too many enemies that's going to be the main concern but always going to be a factor. We'll check in with Don and see how many traders he's got out as well. Don on 73 traders. So both of these guys right now trading like absolute madmen. Up, up towards the north, Don going to be losing that fishing ship. And players just chilling out for the moment. I mean, everyone's just biding their time now. And the question is, who's going to blink first? Because Crackety up towards the north, he's definitely in a bit of a weak spot. I think he might be in alliance with B, but I'm not 100% sure. Just because B's not killing him. When he definitely could. 
He knows that one of the landmarks did go down earlier. Town center still yet to be repaired all the way back up. And we hear villages or we hear something being deleted. It might be buildings. Let's check in and see how many outposts Don's sitting on. 63 at the moment. So not very high. Now he's built a whole bunch of these outposts. And even though they haven't been upgraded, they've got their emplacements in. And you can tell that because they've got these little covers on the window. So you, you see these little openings? This indicates that they've got their emplacements. Specifically, they've got their cannon emplacements. Whereas these ones here, they don't have anything at all. You can see nothing at all. But these ones, cannon emplacements. It's not until they get their, their circle that they actually get their, uh, their stone uh, upgrade or, or their fortification upgrade. If we go have a look at Adni, I'm sure we can find plenty of them. Yeah, these circle ones, these guys have got their fortification upgrade. And to be honest, you probably don't need the fortification upgrade. It's kind of a waste. Uh, like it's only 100 stone, but at the same time, you know, you upgrade three. That's that's a cannon emplacement that you could be putting on one of them. Uh, and those are really, really important. Uh, so another factor to consider. But I guess if you've got that much, if you've got that many resources, then you're not really that fast, are you? Adney just reaching absolutely crazy numbers of traders now. Sitting on 94 in queue. He's got 94 as well uh, that are out and about at the moment, active. Are these guys sitting on max popular? Are they, are they sitting on, yeah, 198. Like, we quite literally have the... This is like the ultimate boom-off right now. We're, we're literally witnessing the ultimate boom-off in this game. We've got four Abbasid players. Each one has taken a respective corner. House of Wisdom in the right side. House of Wisdom on the top side. House of Wisdom over on the left side. Every Abbasid player has got their own corner, with the exception of, say, the one down to the south, which uh, which Kor has decided to ignore. Core definitely. Uh, I know. I know. Core is often considered a, a favorite by many. He did run the account or, or use the account uh, future FFA tawny champion. But my concern is that he's a little bit exposed right now. Things aren't looking the best for him. Now, did Lee not get that landmark out? I'm not sure whether. Yeah. Okay. Lee not, Lee not got that landmark out. So he's got one, two. Third one yet to be built and that's the fourth one how do you even get that back i see it but i don't i don't hear it how many landmarks has he got let's check it should be three and i don't think that's one of them i don't know where the main town center is for lee knock i got no idea is it over here that's the step out. i got no idea where it is he might be hiding it somewhere He's hiding it. There it is. It's up towards the top. And now the, our first bit of action in quite some time. Unfortunately, it's going to end very quickly as all of the uh, all of the villagers are able to take out the first of the bombard. Second one going to be fortunately able to fall back. Springwood's coming out. Cleaning up the villagers very quickly. Numbers here looking good. Looking healthy for B. In the middle of the map, expansion continues. We can see, like, just look on the map how much Adney has actually managed to take here. This is starting to get really bad for all the other players in the game. Really good for Adney, though. All the buildings get packed up. It looks like Leenok has decided to move on to greener pastures. And the Mongols move out. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a migration. Town centers together with the barracks. What is that? That's the market. Look how cool that looks. Market's going to be moving out as well. Bombards and trebuchets looking to take out these buildings before they go down. He leaves the town center back up towards the main base. And at the same time, sends the white stupa into the base of Crackety. He says, hey, Crackety, don't mind me. I'm just going to be biding my time. You can bide yours as well. Managing to run through the base of core now. Leenok looks for somewhere to call home. There's not much space left on this map. He might be able to find something down here. Potentially maybe in the back of core as well. But he's probably going to need cooperation. Now a little bit of the lore. If there's any lore masters in the chat, you guys will be pleased to document this. Leenok and core actually are friends. I say that because they, they did meet each other once. Uh, at, at least I think they met each other once in Germany. Uh, I, I was there. That was where I, when I met Kor, when I met Lee Nock, 
Uh, I saw them both in the same place, so I'm assuming that they know each other. So it doesn't look like we've got cooperation coming out today. So it looks like old friends have turned into enemies once again. Food economy still going off chops right now for Lino. Adney still building up traders. 118 active traders for Adney. Outpost numbers continue to rise. He's on 186. Things are starting to get concerning right now. So I think for Adney, the, 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 the late game plan for him, obviously it's to delete all traders. But I think the big factor is like, he's got to look to defend this. Whether it's with Bombards, Culverins, I don't know exactly what the play is, but he needs to defend that position. One, they're going to be coming down right here. I can feel it. B now going to be turning attention and trying to clean up some of this. The cancerous growth has slowly progressed across this map. Step it out in the base of Adney did go down. Main town center getting focused down here as well. Fortunately, the town center baits the villagers towards the stone or towards the uh, the outpost. Manages to take them out. White stupor remains. More buildings down towards the south. Lenok, unfortunately unable to find a home. Do we really have 420 towers? It can't be that many. Things, things really looking good. Honestly, I'm loving Adney's position more and more. But at the same time, I mean, you got to remember, right? Like, Don's doing the same thing. He's just doing it slightly less. Adney's sitting on 1,500 stone right now. Don on 6... Dot, oh, yeah. So Don drops this and Adney goes, fuck, what do I do? Because if he stops his trade, then he stops his income. And his whole plan goes to shit. But the thing is, he needs to be able to do something against Don. Don actually hasn't walled up, though. That's, that's going to be a problem for him. He's got more and more stone walls coming up, but just remember, he's still got a giant gaping hole at the front. Okay, now deleting some of these. I don't know actually how long these have been deleted for, but you would think that Don would be thinking about deleting these, maybe dropping down a gate or something here so these traders can get through. It might be a smart move for him. B continuing to push forward. He's got a couple of Reboldequins just chilling out. Outpost getting taken out in the middle. Adney losing five of his 374,000 outposts. Bombard's continuing to move forward as well. So now we've got Adney who is walled in Lenok. So he's got one of the landmarks. Second one is out here, the De deer stones with villages around it. Third one in the back of the base here for Crackety. Crackety's been quiet recently. We haven't seen him do much. We haven't seen him move much. He hasn't been under much pressure. Obviously, we saw him lose his town center a bit earlier. He's been able to reestablish it, rebuild it, and re-wall off this position. So things have looked better for him. But it's, it seems like an impasse has been reached on this south side. And for the moment, Sniper, I mean, he just chills out. He just bides his time. He's got a little bit of a back door. That's always going to be a, a problem for him because he can look to try and take this corner. He can look to drop down a wonder. But the issue is going to be that, well, there's always a back door, whether that's drops, whether that is another way that, that you know, maybe Carrick's come through. There is always going to be that potential uh, and something that you're going to have to consider. But Don definitely gearing up for that late game. I can feel it. I, I know it's coming. The outpost number's looking very healthy, very happy here. No, no uh, upgrades coming through on these other than those emplacements. That's going to be the, the key factor here. Trade looking good for Don. 115 traders at the moment. Full 200 population. This is the Abbasid boom off right now. We've got four Abbasid players still in this game, just booming their absolute minds out of the Crackety sitting on 100 villagers, 100 military. Adney on 192. Don on 200. And then, of course, Core on 159. So between these two, or between these four players, we've got more than 650 villagers or economic units on the map. Core in the chat saying, I'm hard lagging AF. I hope I don't crash. Well, Core, I got bad news for you, buddy. Uh, things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. Th I, I, I feel like this, we're not going anywhere. 
I mean, I've got my legs up. I'm chilling out right now. I'm just minding. I'm bu I'm just minding my own business. I'm just having a good little time. We we got the Abbasid Dynasty boom off right now. Things aren't going to be moving forward past this. B trying to make progress. Taking down outposts. It looks like that Deerstones did get finished off. Up towards the north, the town center still remains here. Four Lee Knock behind Adney's walls. You can see the trebuchet is going to be looking to focus it down potentially. Or looking to focus down the wall. It's going to be the wall that they focus down. And with that, going to be exposing that delicious inner core of the town center. Mangadel's moving through as well. And now... And now all the villagers begin turning on Lee Knock. And quickly they turn away. Villagers getting completely mauled there. Adney's still yet to open the door. But now, now unfortunately, the battering ram has been brought in the form of some bombards. And with that, another landmark for Lee Knock going to be going down. He's got one landmark that's already dead. The step right out. Second landmark, the deer stones. It's dead. Third landmark, the town center. Not too long for this world if these bombards are going to be able to make it up. He, he, he's just looking to get through these. Completely ignoring the, the town center, it seems. Don still even yet to move villagers over towards this western position. Remember, it's about whether you're going to blink first. And we'll check in with Don and we'll see whether there are any more stone... Oh my god, look at the traders. Oh my god, look at the traders for Don. Oh my... This is, this is ludicrous. 115 traders. Can we check in on Adney and see how he's doing? One seventy-two traders right now for Adney. What is this trading economy? Town center. Th there's actually a real threat right now to Adney in this game, and that is B. If B breaks through this and looks to take down the coastal trading post or, or prevent any units from coming in on it, Adney could be in trouble. Now, obviously, when I say trouble, it's not trouble. The, the typical trouble that, you know, it's like, oh, he's in trouble. You know, oh, his, his, his trade route is, is under threat. Oh, what's he going to do with his 46,000 outposts? Like, oh, I don't know. No, it's not that kind of trouble. But you guys get what I mean, right? Things aren't going to be looking good for him. Down center struggling. You can see it's getting focused down here. A couple of elite horsemen make their way through. It's not the final landmark. Remember, we've still got back in the base here. Lee Knox... So White Stupa is chilling out next to Crackety for the moment. Plenty of units out here for B. He's actually setting up camp. We can see an outpost going to be coming up. Not a good sign for Adney. Trade coming out. Where, where are these traders right now for for uh, for core? They're coming out to the center. There's There are so many traders in this game, I can't believe it. Remember, one of the bonuses that the Abbasid get is that they get cheaper traders. 33% cheaper traders. So they're very heavily incentivized to go for traders. Obviously, they also get access to the trade wing, uh, which buffs up a whole bunch of things. It includes getting an extra 25% of a secondary resource. So you can choose stone, food, wood, whatever it is that you want. And then you also get an extra 30% gold income from traders as well from Spice Roads. Trebuchet is continuing to push through, firing down. Reboldequin moving forward. Trade route being interrupted. That ain't what you like to see. Core actually going to be coming through here. Core actually going to be turning his attention towards Lenox Town Center. I don't know how Core got through here. But he's managed to find a way. Reboldequin are out. And bad news. The trade route is shut down. I'm trying to think of some sort of Donald Trump reference to make about trades and deals, but... All I can think about right now is Randy Orton RKOing off the top rope, baby. Do it, Randy. Give it to him. Give it to him, Randy. Yeah, get him, boy. Look at him taking it out. So, B moving in. It's been a slow and steady push. Can you imagine if there was a wonder up or something like that? And it, the thing is... Oh, my... Oh, 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 my... Wow. Okay. Uh, that was a lot of fortification of the outposts. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but that was quite literally like 75 outposts that just got fortified in the blink of an eye. I don't even know if that's legal. How did you do that? I wish I knew. Reboldequin firing off upon those traders. 
Adni now sitting on only 178 economic unit population. Slowly but steadily, the numbers do get whittled down. There are so many damn traders in this game. This is this is crazy. L look at the traders for for Don. They're blocking each other. That's how many traders he's got. And now Don is going to start walling in. I don't know why Don isn't walling in across here. It's, it's almost like Don doesn't realize that, that people can just walk around his walls and straight into his base and kill all of his dudes. Well, not really, but you guys get what I mean. There's a lot of production out here for Don as well. Things are looking good for him. Adney, on the other, on the other hand, not so much. Lee not gets knocked out. I do apologize. Lee not gets knocked out. It looks like a whole bunch of blue units came up here. Look to take it out. I, I will suspect that that's actually Crackety who's taken that one. We'll have to double check. We'll get the logs for it a little bit later. Crackety able to take out Lenok there, I would suspect. We did see a lot of red units in the bay. Oh, no. Oh, no. 56 minutes, 27 seconds. Oh, no. Oh, no. It happened in the last game that we had a bit of a freeze. Are there too many units? Did things actually freeze? Was Age of Empires 4 not made not to handle more than 1,000 units in a game? 131 traders might be 131 too many. Things aren't pretty right now. And I guess we just chill. We just hold. We just wait. We just bide our time. Uh... I don't know if these guys are still playing. I don't know what is happening. I guess everybody wins. It, is it a victory for everybody if all of the traders just live out their days collecting stone and... Oh, we're back in! We're back in! We've got it! We got it! We got it, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to let you guys know that we are back. We are back here. We're back with a brand new track. And the traders are still dying. The traders are still <laughs> still dying. And I mean, at, at this point in the game, the engine, honestly, like the fact that Age of Empires 4 is still running this well, despite so many freaking units in the game. Like you, you've just got a ridiculous amount of stuff that is in this game right now. I wish I could find some, there's some villagers. Like just Adney alone right now is sitting on close to probably 800 units. It, it, it is ludicrous. But now Adney going to continue funneling in units. Apparently, Adney may have dropped from the game. I'm getting word at the moment that Adney has dropped from the game. He's funneling in a whole bunch of... A whole bunch of cavalry. Adney dropped from the game. Uh... Wouldn't it be really nice to be able to just press the escape button and go save? And then the players could then load into the game, into the lobby, because obviously the game has crashed, you know. We could see that there was a there was a bit of an issue there. But unfortunately we don't have that. But in season three, you want to know what we do have. We do have taunts coming and we do have cheats coming. Now we're not gonna have restore from replay. Um unfortunately not. Um, but we will have taunts and we will have cheats. So we've got that to look forward to. Um, so that is... Uh, Don Adi's building a wonder. I don't know how to feel enthusiastic about that right now with, with Ad Adney dropping out and really... I mean, it, it's difficult because Core is building a wonder. It's a wonder race. We actually have a wonder race. Core going to be dropping down a prayer hall of Ukma as well. And you can see the traders are standing on top of it, almost ignoring the the wonder. He's got to get it down as quickly as possible. If we're having a wonder race right now, Don Artie already uh, about 20, 30% of the way. Now Core going to be turning his attention towards it. How many villagers have we got on this bad boy? 34 villagers at the moment for Core. Don Artie going to be tapping away with only 22. There is a chance in it right now. And all the villagers get pulled. We might have ourselves a race right now. All of the villagers getting pulled for Core. Just when I thought I couldn't get enthusiastic about a game, all of a sudden you've got 85 villagers being pulled. Core looking to complete this bad boy. It's on 4,400 health. Compare that over to Don and Don's going to be outraced. This is not good for Don. Don going to be down. And Prayer Hall of Ukma is now finished for Core. 
before he races, we've got ourselves a wonder race, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, Don Artie is going to be pipped from the top on the finishing line. Just when you thought things couldn't get better for Don, after Adney drops out of the game, Kaur says, yo, what up, bro? And now the burden is placed on both of these guys. Don Artie's got a wonder. Kaur's got a wonder. They've both got victory conditions. And now we've got three people on the other side of the map that have got to stop both of them. We've only got four minutes to save the world. Well, no, we've got uh, we've got a few more minutes than that, but it's going to take a lot of effort. That is for sure. Things not looking... <laughs> oh, my Lord. Let's, let's take a look at the Wonder Tracker right now. You can see the difference between it. 20 seconds of difference between these guys. 24 seconds in total. It is, it is not a pretty sight. Poor Don. He's got to be feeling it right now. If we ride on board with Don, you can see he's got a lot of, uh, of uh, economic units. But almost all of them are going to be his traders. And so he wasn't even able to call more villagers to build that wonder. So now with the prayer hall of Ukbar up, Don obviously going to be focusing completely on his neighbor and looking to try and take down that wonder as soon as possible. Good news for Don is that fortunately for him, there's not a lot of units here to defend this. Bombards are out. There's only a single bombard. We can see a whole bunch of traders have just been deleted here. Don with plenty of resources in the back. Looking at about 150,000 resources. And now Kaur going to be doing the same thing. We can see he's deleted his own units over on this side. Looking to try and build up a defense. And interestingly, we might see players that have both got wonders look to take each other out. Don now looking to drop down gates in his front wall. He's managed to draw, draw these units through. Kaur's wonder has been destroyed. Kaur has deleted his wonder because he knew that he would be targeted down by Don. And if he gets focused... If he gets focused down by Don, then he knows that he will lose and he needs to try and stay in this game as long as possible. So by deleting that, he actually says, Don, you can try for the victory condition and I'm going to help out with everybody. And now Don finally puts some walls down to prevent any units from coming through here. But uh, I don't know if, if Don knows this, but it's a little bit too late. Villagers are making their way forward. They've got their wheelbarrow out. They're moving as fast as they can. But this was something that I called out probably about 40 minutes ago when Don was doing trade here. It's a, There was a giant gaping hole in this wall. And now the military units just walk straight through. Along the south side, we begin to hear the armies rolling out. Don going to be under attack from multiple angles. Trebuchet numbers looking good here on that south side. Hand Cannon is also doing work on that backside. Lance is going to be coming out. And now that wall going to be trying to get up. He's holding on for it. B also going to be moving across the map, running into a core keep. There are quite a few that are out here, so he's going to have to make some, some room out here. Ideally, you'd like to see players all attacking from similar but different angles because otherwise they're going to be caught up on each other. And now Don, with a massive army here, really looks to secure this front. Don sitting on 174 military pop, plenty of resources in the bank. And look at the units that are queued up right now. He's going to continue queuing up units non-stop. Up on that north front, we still don't see any real progress coming through. A little bit of a hole in the wall over on that side, but still there is... Still there's plenty of units here. And Core definitely having to... Or feeling a little bit bad there, realizing that, you know, there was no real way that he was going to be able to beat Don. In fact, he was so scared, he thought Don would, might have been able to commit and kill him. So we talked about this a bit earlier in the game. The fact that Cora has got his House of Wisdom so close to his main town center, Don very easily just could have run over the top of him. You can see how close Don was to potentially doing that. So Cora to stay alive just deletes the wonder and says, go on, I'll, I'll let you have it. Little bit of a little bit of a gauntlet now beginning to build on this south side. Keep in mind, Don going to be eligible for those extra five points in the event that he makes or pulls out the victory here today. He's looking good so far. All right, and so what we're going to be doing right now is because I've, I've been alerted to the fact that chat might be a little bit ahead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off chat. So I do apologize. I hope I get the right one. Let's see if we get it. Boom. And boom. Look at that. 
So chat is now turned off. I hope you guys have enjoyed it throughout this game. Uh, a big shout out to... I don't even know who, who are we bootlegging off right now uh, with this. It, it might be... I'm going to go with... No, I don't think it's Sniper. I think it's Core. We're bootlegging, bootlegging off Core right now. Uh, so thank you to Core. Uh, but yeah, you guys will lose chat now because we are... Unfortunately, we're a minute behind chat. I don't know how that's worked out. because Oh, because our game lagged. For whatever reason, our game lagged. And so now we're a minute behind. So big Sag there. But I'm sure you can imagine what they're saying. They're saying, oh, oh, oh my, oh my god. That's what should happen when you kill a segment of the wall. That is what should happen when you kill one segment of the wall. That should happen right there. You kill one segment, all the fucking walls should fall down like that. Good luck, good luck healing that shit up. That was nice. And that's why, that's also why you don't build gates in walls, by the way. Is he... You gotta focus down the gate. Sacred Sight being captured in the middle. It's being captured by Crackety. He's not gonna be able to really contest a potential Sacred Sight victory here. He's got two out of three, though. So not a terrible amount. He's gonna be moving around towards the north. You can see Don gonna have to fall back on this position. He looks to getting... Looks to get the rewall up. Focusing down on, on this one section of stone wall. He's doing a, a decent job to take it out. And now those units up towards the north. Don under attack from multiple angles. We'll check in with the timer and see where he's at. Eight minutes and 48 seconds. Not long. Not long to go. Don Artie going to try and pull off a miracle here. B stacking up the food. Looking pretty happy. Looking pretty healthy. 100k food in the bank. 28 stone. It's classic. But now those holes in the walls continuing to build. Don finding a nice little centralized point here where he's going to be able to hold. Now, keep in mind, there is the potential for landmarks to go down here. Even if he loses that first landmark, he's got the one, the second one in the back of the base. Bombard's firing off. Hand Cannoneer's looking to defend as well. Manganel's in the mix. Don Adi looking very strong, very good. Now, keep in mind, there's no stone wall separating out this uh, prayer hall of Ukba, but there is a damn hell lot of outposts. So you're going to be running quite the gauntlet if you try and get through there. Hand Cannon is looking very strong. Towards the north, more units coming in for Don. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of money in the bank. Keep gonna be going up towards his northern position as well. He manages to get it up, but there's plenty of siege back here as well. Don holding on. Bombard's losing their lives. Reinforcements coming in. Eight Manganel's in the queue. Spearman gonna be working their way through as well. Plenty of siege on this backside for Sniper. B really yet to make an entrance. He's got some siege workshops that he's put on the front side. He's still working through all the buildings of core. I don't even know where his military is right now. I take it back. I know where his military is. He's found his way to the front. And now Don looks to try and take out some of Sniper's bombards. Doing a decent job. He's got effective numbers here. 84 hand cannoneers, 25 spearmen. Don down to seven minutes to go. It's a long time. He's got plenty of resources in the bank though. He's fighting right now, three versus one on his north flank. He's got core coming in from the center. He's got B. He's also got Crackety and Sniper on his south. So I do take it back. It's not a 3v1. This is a 4v1. Don is trying to hold. Lance is going to be coming out, looking to try and take down this siege on the top side. Spearman getting drawn away. Elite Spears have got the upgrades. Looking to try and take down the traps. They get their torches out. They begin to focus it down. The first trap goes down. Second trap going to become a target here as Don continues to move through. On the south side, more horsemen going to be running in towards the Manganel. Spearman coming out. Don definitely not going to be skipping any beats here. More reinforcements on the back side continuing to fold in. Don now under pressure on this northern side as well as the Bombards continue focusing their fire on that keep. Trebuchet is looking to try and tee off towards some of this infrastructure. But Don still holding on, fighting off the four versus one right now. Don looking stronger as he pushes back towards these two players. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Randy off the top rope. He comes through. The Reboticons. Watch out, Don. Don't do it. Oh, they do it. They do it. They absolutely do it. They destroy it. There's so many damn Reboticons in here right now. Don Artie fighting for his life. We see more and more units progressing through on the north side. The Bombard Cannons are out. He's got plenty of culverin up here as well. You can see the huge numbers of elite horsemen. Hand Cannoneers rallying towards the north. 
trying their best to hold on. Still, we don't see the Reboticoids turning. They're fight turning now upon the units of Crackity in some sort of sheer determined approach. They've decided that that is the appropriate way to go. But now Don turns towards his this unit mass up towards the north. Hand Cannon is coming out, blasting through all the Bombards. Three Bombards remain, two Bombards remain, one Bombard about to go down. And that is going to be all of those Bombards on the north side right now. Don Arty, five minutes until victory. It's not long to go, but I got to say, Don Arty, if there's anyone who can pull it off, it's got to be the Don. Don is doing absolutely everything he can to stay alive. He's still got plenty of resources in the bank. He's still not yet drained. He's called it perfectly. He estimated exactly how many resources he would need. And he knows that he's got enough. Reboldequin moving through. Reboldequin getting taken out by the hand cannoneers. Not the Reboldequins. Randy got a fall back from that position. We almost get taken out by a trebuchet. And now those numbers really looking good for Sniper. Don looking to hold on. So many damn units in here right now for him. Mangadel's on the backside as well, up towards the north. The push still not really yet to come in. It's fizzled out completely. Crackity going to be trying to stop it. Reboldequin's going to have to fall back. A couple of relics getting pulled in here as well. And Don with a hand cannon. He is really looking to force back this English player on the south side. There's plenty of trebs. There's plenty of bombards. But unfortunately, there's not plenty of units down here for Sniper. He's trying his best to force back Don, but Don just doing a 4v1 right now and doing it impressively. This is with the Abbasid. He ain't need no Chinese for this. No sorry, Bob. And there is barely an outpost to be seen. He is doing this purely with his military, with his population, with all of this beautiful mass of, of production that he's got back here. Really utilizing that production bonus. Remember, he's got that three-star bonus. All of these buildings getting buffed up. You can see it right there. 20% production speeds. He's able to utilize them and now starting to drain down. He's under 6,000 food. 6,340 to be exact. Don continues fizzling. He's struggling right now, still getting pushed back on all fronts. Hand Cannon is going to get cleaned up by the Elite Horseman. And Don's still holding strong. Siege numbers looking good. He hasn't forgotten about the Springleds. He's got them in queue. And three minutes until one to victory. Damn, that creeps up on you quickly, doesn't it? Oh, Don and Core! Core now going to pick off it. He's going for Crackity. Oh my God, the absolute... Can you believe this guy? Just when they're all looking to try and take down Don... Crackity is going to become the target of Core. He says, hey, mate, I know where your landmarks are. Don't mind me if I just go for a sneaky, cheeky little back door. You know, we talked about the back door before, but now Core gets some ideas. And with that, instead of that attention now being drawn on the top side, where Core once pushed, he's now potentially going to be pulling away the forces of Crackity. Landmark going to be focused down. You can see all the horsemen in here trying their best to take it down, throwing their torches, looping them over the top. A traitor in here as well from B. But back towards Don. He still fights on. The Springles doing a decent job from B. Able to pick them up. Two minutes to go. Don looking to hold on. The Bombards moving around the south side here. There's still quite a bit of work to get through if he's going to be able to do it. Resource numbers really starting to look low for Don. He's under 20k resources. And with that, the landmark does get destroyed. And Crackity might potentially be one to get focused down. But now B comes in and covers for Crackity. B says, hey, I'm going to take some of those units I've got on the front line. I'm going to bring them back towards this position. I'm going to take out your units with them. We've got infighting now in the alliance that had built up against Don Hardy. Now we've got infighting. They're, these players are now looking to secure second place or third place or three additional points here. And all of those units going to be going down. And now we can see the horsemen coming out from core, looking to backstab the alliance that he'd once made, breaking through the wall. It looks like these, ho these horsemen are going to have to run the gauntlet, though, as they continue to run into spears, heading through. He knows the town center's going to be there, and a bombard actually got picked up right there. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. I saw a red bombard on that screen. But it definitely seems like Don is going to be able to hold one minute until, until one to victory. I don't think you're getting through this, ladies and gentlemen. I think Don Artie is going to be your victor today in this game. He's held on in a 4v1 in beautiful fashion. And now, crackity, the question is going to be whether he's able to make it through to the end. The spearmen continue coming down. All of those units up towards the north have been cleaned up. We can see the yellow units march across the map, but the question is not whether they're going to get there in time. The question is whether the, they are going to be able to take down this main town center. Crackity is holding on for dear life. 
If he makes it to the end of the game, he gets an extra two points. If Core takes him out, he's going to pick up an extra three because he gets a kill. And unfortunately, it looks like the Spearmen are going to be able to hold on. Core going to be able to stay alive. And speaking of staying alive, Don Hardy continues to stay alive. At no point did it ever look under threat. At no point did it ever look in doubt. It was unfortunate that his biggest competitor, Adney, in the north of the map, did tap out. But today, Don Hardy will be your victor. Congratulations to Don as he wins yet another game in the Outback Octagon. Whew. Damn, Don. How does he do it? How does he do it? That was an impressive hold. No outposts at all. A little bit of walling. And just complete domination. That was impressive stuff from the Don right there. We'll take a look and work out who got that second place, who got that third place, who got that fourth place. Let's find out now. The military. Don Artie going to be sitting in the king spot. 1398. Second place. Going to be going to B with 978 kills. Third place, going to be going to Crackety here with 638 points. Or with uh, 638 kills, rather. Core, 459, takes fourth place. And then Sniper with fifth place, 474 kills. Unfortunately, Adney did get knocked out uh, or, or did drop out of the game. Uh, Lee Knock also got, got knocked out quite early together with Bra. Uh, so not managing... A, a whole bunch, but there are your points, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a look at the end, the total resources, uh, and you can see just how high Don got. It was called out multiple times in that game. Crackety said, Don Artie is trading. He is trading heavily to the center. We need to focus Don. And nobody did, and that's what you got. You mess with the Don, you get the Artie. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. This is going to be the final game in the group stage of the Outback Octagon next week potentially next week potentially the week after i'll have to i'll have to uh, wait and see because we got a baby on the way uh and there is a <laughs> there's a chance that it might come uh when when we're scheduled for the next next week of outback octagon but next week we have the finals that will be coming to you i'll let you guys know with any updates exactly what's going on but if you're watching this on youtube i hope you guys have enjoyed this game and we'll catch you guys in the next one